ice in one of the harshest environments in the world dwells an ancient giant mysterious elusive a master of this icy realm but is it on the verge of disappearing forever long last, the bowhead whale is about to allow us a glimpse into its secret world. the Arctic's layers, the bowhead whale dwells in a universe where few humans would dare go. The freezing waters are filled with strange creatures. The granddaddy of them all is the bowhead whale. Some say it can live up to 200 years. For the people who live here, it served as a powerful symbol for centuries. While for commercial whalers of years past, bowheads were a valuable commodity. Hunted to near extinction, no one is exactly sure how many are alive today. Commercial whaling may be a thing of the past, but that doesn't mean bowheads are safe. Human activity could still be threatening these whales. No one is exactly sure how at risk they really are. But we do know that if they're in trouble, the Arctic could be too. Since they spend their lives in this icy landscape, they're a barometer of its well-being. But so little is known about these whales. While researchers know that bowheads migrate to seasonal feeding grounds, they can only guess what routes they take. And how bowheads navigate through these icy channels is a complete mystery. Now, a determined team is about to find out more. A wildlife filmmaker will venture beneath the ice, hoping to capture never-before-seen images of these whales in their natural habitat. While on the surface, a group of researchers will use cutting-edge technology to answer some of these nagging questions. Together, they hope to paint a more detailed portrait of its life and perhaps learn what the future holds for the bowhead whale and the Arctic. Disco Bay. Bowheads have passed through these stunning waters off the west coast of Greenland for hundreds of years. Up until the 20th century, whalers flocked here too, knowing they'd find this valuable species. These days, the whalers are long gone, Bowheads have been legally protected since the 1930s. But the whales still come to Disco Bay, feeding here for a few weeks each spring. It's the ideal home for a center dedicated to bowhead research, and the natural first stop for wildlife filmmaker Adam Ravage. Adam spent the past 15 years working in the Arctic, under some of the most brutal conditions imaginable trying to get close to some of the most extraordinary creatures on the planet. His aim, to capture their hidden lives, the way they behave when no humans are present. When I get close, I can see the whole animal look into its eyes. And for me, this is when I make a real connection to it. The thrill of venturing beneath the ice is what first drew Adam to the Arctic. 
Every time I drop beneath the surface, it's like I'm exploring an alien ice world. It's so full of surprises, and the chance that every time I come around an ice floe, I may find something that no one has ever seen before. Few have ever seen, let alone captured footage of, these whales beneath the ice. But Adam's no rookie. He's spent years mastering techniques that enable him to approach the most elusive subjects. Adam's images will shed light on the bowhead and help scientists understand it better. In the past decade and a half, Adam's caught only fleeting glimpses of these whales. But on this trip, he's determined to spend time with them, up close. It won't be easy. The Arctic is one of the most dangerous environments in the world for humans, especially below the ice. For one thing, the water is freezing cold. Even in an insulated suit, Adam can only stay down for about an hour. Without it, he'd be dead in moments. On the surface, shifting chunks of ice could carry him out to sea, or crush him. But his first challenge will be to simply find these whales, not a simple task. Over the years, commercial whaling has decimated bowhead populations. In the eastern Arctic, there may be only a few hundred left. A team of bowhead researchers has promised to help Adam track these whales. But they're not scheduled to arrive in Disco Bay for another two weeks. So Adam decides to see if the locals can give him a sneak preview. Guide Abel Brandt and his team know the waters around here best. Adam hopes they can lead him straight to the bowheads. Then I'd like to work uh, the month at trying to achieve some good uh, sh surface shots and some nice underwater shots. But it's going to be trickier than he thought. Adam doesn't speak the local languages, Danish and Greenlandic. And it turns out the translator he's hired doesn't seem to understand much English. Are there whales around? Has he seen any whales yet? Does Abel think that we would go and try whales right away? Ask him if, if we get another person, um, can that person be someone who speaks Engl more English, maybe, to help? This whale. What do you call this, Abel? Bowhead? You know you're in trouble when you have to use visual aids. When they finally make it out onto the water, Adam tries everything to make himself understood. Uh, I'm looking for diving. Capit? 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 Cat? Capit? Yeah? <laughs> okay. Okay. I can't do this. Forget it. We'll just go back over there and I'll show you. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, I understand. <laughs> but language isn't their only barrier. With temperatures well below freezing, slabs of ice cover the water's surface. For two long weeks, ice clogs the area, and it's slow going. Eventually, they work out their communication problems and together find an ideal spot for Adam's first dive. Suddenly, two bowheads surface, perhaps a sign that Adam's luck is turning. It's 
seeing bowheads in the open for the first time, I'm just amazed at how graceful they are. Adam hopes he'll be able to draw closer underwater. The ocean is rich with tiny crustaceans called copepods, minuscule meals for this mammoth beast. But this snack doesn't lure the whales any nearer, so Adam moves toward them. Every time he gets close, they dive. And vanish into the distance. go by and Adam's just about had it. Then, suddenly, he spots something in the distance. It's a baby bowhead. For Adam, the encounter is thrilling, but bittersweet. Face to face with the baby, all I get is a quick glimpse, and I wonder, am I looking at the last of its kind? Then, with a couple flicks of the tail, it's gone. For the next two weeks, Adam keeps trying. But in the end, he never gets more than a tantalizing glimpse. A less experienced person might lose hope. But Adam long ago learned that in the Arctic, you have to be patient. It was 15 years ago, and Adam, a newcomer here, was faced with a dilemma. He knew he could capture footage of walruses behaving naturally if he kept his distance. But once he moved in close, their behavior changed. With a human around, they'd lash out or flee. He was beginning to think he'd never be able to film the animal's genuine behavior up close. Then Adam met Inuit hunter, Simeone Kaunuk. Simeone taught him that to become an accepted part of the walrus's surroundings, he needed to take his time. Gradually, Adam learned to move in slowly, and the walruses responded. They relaxed and allowed him to approach. As a result, Adam was able to capture some of the most tender moments in their lives. just has to figure out how to get this close to bowheads. If the local guides can't get him there, maybe some state-of-the-art science will do the job. In Disco Bay, the team of researchers Adam's been expecting has arrived. Led by Danish biologist Mads Peter Heidi Jurgensen, they're conducting exciting new research on bowheads. And while they're here, they've agreed to help Adam find these whales as well. Mads Peter is a researcher with Greenland's Institute of Natural Resources. Uh, that time is 2.27. He wants to know where these whales go and when, uh, so it'll be easier to keep track of how many there are. Yes. How is the uh, Despite years of research, Mads Peter has yet to get a full picture of where these whales go. 
tracking them under the ice is a formidable challenge. They've been using satellite tags to monitor the whale's movements, but there's a problem. The tags keep getting knocked off. If the team can get the tags to stay on, they'll reveal where the whales travel for the next eight months and how deep they dive along that route. Mehdi Bakhtiari's work will offer a different perspective on these whales. He's the lead engineer for a remarkable National Geographic project called Critter Cam. For over a decade, this remote camera system has helped researchers gain incredible new insights into the lives of marine animals. Attached with the help of a powerful suction cup, harness, or other device, the Critter Cam hitches a ride on the back of an animal for hours at a time and films the world from their perspective. It's been successfully used on blue whales, sharks, seals, and yes, even penguins. But never on a bowhead. If Mehdi can attach the critter cam to even one of these whales, he'll score the equivalent of a six-hour ride on its back, catch a glimpse of its hidden life, and may even find out why those tags keep disappearing. But I'll be out on forty. It's going to be harder than they thought. Even though it's May, the harbor is clogged with sheets of ice. But the team can't afford to wait for the ice to clear. The bowhead will depart for new waters in just a couple weeks. Mads Peter and his team move out in their research ship, the porcelain, slicing a path through the ice. Adam's right behind, along with a convoy of local fishermen happy to take advantage of the new opening. Rush hour traffic, Greenland. In the open water, Mikkel Willem Jensen prepares the satellite tags. A barb is used to attach the tag to the whale. To a human, it looks huge. But for a 60-ton whale wrapped in more than a half a meter of blubber, it'll probably only feel like a slight prick. The seas are rough, but there's no time to wait for perfect conditions. They'll have to tag 10 whales before their work is done. Going 50 kilometers per hour over high waves, Nickel takes a beating in the bow. At last, he spots a bowhead. But how do you follow a whale swimming underwater, especially in rough seas? Nickel tracks it by watching for the footprints, or eddies, left by its tail. The pole is cumbersome and hard to aim. Nichols got to wait for just the right moment. But it's too rough. He can't get a clear shot. And there's no sign conditions will improve. So I say that we, uh, we hit home and call it a day, a very short day. Okay. They can only hope they'll have better luck in the morning. While bowheads are scarce today in the waters off Greenland, they may have once numbered over 12,000. They were called right whales, since whalers thought they were the right ones to hunt for a number of reasons.
Because they're slow swimmers, bowheads were easy marks. The fact that their bodies floated after being killed also made them prime targets for hunters. They were highly valuable as well. Bowhead blubber produced large quantities of oil, as much as 6,000 gallons per whale. Other parts of the whale were used in everything from corsets to umbrellas. But by the middle of the 20th century, commercial whalers had almost hunted bowheads into extinction. In the eastern Arctic, only a few escaped. This bowhead could be 200 years old. It may have witnessed the slaughter of the 19th century firsthand. Perhaps that's why they're so wary of man. is calm and clear of ice and the team is determined to tag its first whale. Adam studies their technique and films the action. If the chase seems like a hunt, it's because Mikkel and Mads Peter use almost the exact same methods that the whalers perfected shadowing a whale by boat until they're close enough to use the tools of their trade. A whale rises in the distance and they're off. Here they go. doesn't take. Closer, Suey, closer. Time and time again, they come close and just miss. But the team doesn't give up. They need to place these tags if they're going to track the whales this year. Come on, come on, come on, one more time. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Finally, Success. Film Tanda Putra mula ditayangkan di Pawagam 29 Ogos ini. Kenyataan hina yang dipetuan agung, beberapa pihak lagi tampil buat laporan polis. Paparan penuh dalam berita nasional, 8 malam ini. Over the next several days, Mads, Peter and Nickel managed to place all ten satellite tags. Just in time, the bowheads they've tagged show signs that they're ready to move on. The team suspects the whales are headed northwest to Canada's Lancaster Sound. Adam wants to get there first to film the bowhead's arrival. Mads Peters' group remains behind to track the whales with data sent back by the satellite tags. Betty prepares the critter cam for its maiden voyage on a bowhead. Adam's plan to film the whales as they arrive in Lancaster Sound is a long shot. 
He'll have to be in just the right place at just the right time to catch them coming through. Modern science may give him a general idea of where to look for these whales, but if he's going to find them, Adam will need a little extra help from a people who know the bowhead well, the Inuit. Four years ago, Adam was able to experience the bowhead just like the Inuit, who looked to the whale for sustenance and a sense of cultural identity. Adam's teacher, Simeone, had passed away, but his widow never forgot her husband's friend. She invited Adam to participate in the celebration of a traditional Inuit bowhead hunt. This hunt almost didn't happen. In 1979, with bowhead numbers alarmingly low, Canada effectively halted all hunting of this species. Yet the Inuit knew it was commercial whaling that was mainly responsible, not their small-scale traditional hunts. In the early 90s, the Inuit convinced the Canadian government to change the law, and within years, the hunts were back on. Since then, the Inuit have legally hunted one whale every two years. Today, as in centuries past, the ritual brings all generations together. This transfer of knowledge from generation to generation is an ancient tradition, forging a link between the past and the present. Pieces of the flesh and blubber are sent to Inuit communities throughout Canada, and thousands take part in the feast. This was Adam's first chance to see this whale up close. He witnessed the intimate bond between the Inuit and the bowhead, a creature that has provided them with sustenance for thousands of years, and served as a symbol that binds their culture together. Most important of all, he learned a critical Inuit secret. To find bowheads, they said, he should look for beluga whales, since the two are often spotted together. Super Bass Power! Super Bass Power! As he approaches Lancaster Sound, Adam hopes this ancient secret will lead him right to the bowheads, assuming the whales are coming this way. If the whales show up, Mads Peter and his team will have gathered some of the first scientific evidence that Bowhead's journey in just 10 days, 1,600 kilometers from Greenland to Canada. Good news awaits Adam when he arrives. It's the end of June, and for the first time in years, ice still chokes off the Northwest Passage this late in the year. The whales will be forced to wait along the flow edge for the ice to break up before they swim on to their summer grounds. 
This traffic jam should give Adam a great opportunity to film bowheads if and when they make an appearance. From the air, Adam scans for wildlife, searching for signs that this is a healthy habitat, one that will provide safe passage to the bowhead. He catches sight of one of the Arctic's most unusual looking animals, the narwhal. Using two and a half meter tusks that sprout right out of their heads. Males joust in what looks like a dance for dominance. The tusk, which can weigh a hefty nine kilograms, is actually the male narwhal's left front tooth. Its use remains a mystery. deeper than any other whale in the region, searching for Arctic cod. Little else is known about these mysterious whales, but if they're doing well here, bowheads may thrive in Lancaster Sound too. spots a patch of ice where it's safe to land. Next to an ice ledge with a site that begs further investigation. Adam recognizes these unusual creatures. Hey, beluga whales. You can look right down here. There are beluga whales right underneath the ice and the open water. As he slips into the sea, the white whales surround him. If belugas and bowheads do swim together, as the Inuit believe, it looks like Adam might finally find what he's been looking for. I don't know too many playful animals in the Arctic, but belugas seem to enjoy a good game of cat and mouse. Every time I get close, they back off. When I swim away, they shadow me. These incredibly social whales can alter their facial expressions to a human they often look like they're smiling. they can make is legendary. Belugas are often called the canaries of the sea. They have one of the most sophisticated languages of any whale, with at least 11 different types of clicks, whistles, and other sounds. Playing for a while along the edge of the ice floe, the belugas disappear under the shelf. 
just as a group of birds called thick-billed murres make an appearance. These birds are built for a life at sea, spending months at a time on the open water. But there's not much for a murre to eat on the ocean surface, so... They plunge as deep as 120 meters in search of fish and crustaceans. After an hour and a half in water that's minus two degrees Celsius, Adam hasn't spotted any bowheads. Maybe they just haven't arrived yet. Adam doesn't have time to find out, because the weather is changing, and his pilot is anxious to get them off the ice. They'll have to wait until morning for another dive. While in Greenland, on Disco Bay, Mads Peter and his team are tracking the 10 whales they successfully tagged and are ready for the next stage of their research, finally deploying the Critter Cam. Using this camera, which attaches to marine animals with a powerful suction cup, they hope to get an inside look at the world of a bowhead whale. Medi has spent eight years perfecting the Critter Cam and its waterproof housing, but there's no guarantee he'll be able to attach it to a bowhead. spots a whale. They follow its footprints, waiting for just the right moment. presses the critter cam to the whale and it sticks. In six hours, the suction cup will automatically release. The team hopes they'll get a glimpse into the secret life of a bowhead whale. that has survived by making itself scarce. Six hours later, Medi gets the signal that the critter cam has disengaged from the whale and is floating on the surface. They've got the machine, and it seems to be in good shape. Ah, yes! Back at the research station, everyone's anxious to see what the critter cam will reveal. <laughs> they roll tape. Wow. Oh. 
This is the first time any human has seen the world from a bowhead's point of view. The critter cam has opened a window onto the life of one of the oldest creatures on Earth. Something comes into frame. It's another bowhead. Suddenly, the team is eye to eye with the mysterious creature they've been chasing. The critter cam reveals the bowheads bumping together, proof that these often solitary animals interact in the ocean's depths. One seems to deliberately sideswipe the critter cam. This may suggest why some of Mads Peter's earlier tags came loose prematurely. The whales might be inadvertently knocking the satellite tags off one another. Mads Peter is worried. If the bowheads are knocking off the tags, much of the team's hard work will be wasted, and a chance to help protect them might be lost. Only time will tell if these tags will stay on. Back in Lancaster Sound, the ice is breaking up, eating away at Adams Base Camp. And the whales still haven't shown up. Adam doesn't want to leave before the bowheads arrive. But if he's not careful, the ice could crumble beneath him, and he could get swept away. But the shifting ice also creates an unexpected opportunity. Near camp, the tides have opened up a crack in the ice, and Adam can't resist another dive. While a howling wind wreaks havoc on the surface. A serene world awaits Adam below. Huge caverns. Cathedrals draped in curtains of green algae. Swarms of shrimp-like creatures fatten up on the algae. can go for weeks without eating, but then need to gorge and can gobble up almost half a ton of these animals a day. the Caribbean than the Arctic. Some of the species look more liquid than solid. In these inky depths, strange organisms produce light shows through a chemical process called bioluminescence. Two is the largest of all Arctic fish, the Greenland shark. Growing to over five and a half meters, this massive shark has forged a strange relationship with a tiny, wriggling parasite. The parasite, a type of copepod, 
clings to the shark's eye, feeding on it and partially blinding it. But in return, the parasite's wriggling may lure in prey. The abundance of life is a positive sign for this part of the Arctic and a hopeful indication that bowheads would flourish here too. Still, none appear. And if the whales don't show up soon, Adam will be forced to give up. On the surface, the ice is getting dangerously weak. Adam will have to break camp. Got crammed. Where should I sit? <laughs> Got no wings? Got it? Time is running out. Water now blankets much of the ice. It could disintegrate at any time. This could be Adam's last chance. Overnight, the ice has begun to fracture, placing Adam in a perilous situation. To reach the open water, he has to swim through this narrow channel among shifting chunks of ice. It's like a maze. Adam must proceed cautiously. A simple change in the wind and he could get trapped or even crushed. In the distance, he sees belugas. Could bowheads be here too, as the Inuit said? As he gets closer, the belugas seem to multiply. Finally, he reaches the flow edge and sees something moving in the distance, something big. As he gets closer, he realizes it's what he's been hoping for all along, a bowhead whale. And to his delight, the whale doesn't seem to be afraid. finally have an answer. Over the next several months, the tags remain on the whales and continue signaling their position. After their start in Greenland and passage through Lancaster Sound, some of the whales will continue all the way down to Hudson Strait, a nearly 4,800 kilometer journey 
that will take them six months. Now that more is known about their migration routes, researchers will be better able to study and protect this species. Despite the pressures on the Arctic, these bowheads seem to be thriving, and new surveys are even more encouraging. Worldwide, there are more bowheads than we once thought. They seem to be making a slow, steady comeback, and there could be over 10,000 alive today. The same whales that withstood the slaughter of the 19th century could be witnessing the revival of their own kind. For centuries, this giant of the Arctic has survived, enduring all that nature and man have placed in its path. At long last, it has given researchers a glimpse into its mysterious life, providing details that may safeguard its future and the icy realm it calls home.